Greetings, this is going to be part B, part two, part B, of Jesus is God in the flesh. I hope you listen to part one, where I go into things like the virgin birth, the Godhead, and a few other things. So let's take a look in Matthew chapter four and verse 10, when Satan tempted Jesus, we read, Then saith Jesus unto him, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So only God is worshipped. But then in Matthew 9, 18, we read, While Jesus spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him. Worshipped who? Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6, And again, when God bringeth in the first begotten, Jesus, into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses and the uh, Mormons both teach that Jesus is just an angel. As a matter of fact, the Mormons teach that Jesus is the brother of Satan. Uh, would you want Satan's brother as your savior? I'm going to pass on that. I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm definitely going to pass on that. Can you imagine they, they meet Christ at the white throne judgment and they tell him to his face that he is Satan's brother? Really? I wouldn't want to tell him that new no. all right and let all the angels of god worship him i mean come on you're gonna, angels worshiping an angel i don't think so in john 20 in verse 28 chapter 20 and verse 28 of john and thomas answered and said unto jesus my lord and my god now that wasn't you know like when a carpenter smacks his thumb with the hammer, he's hammering a nail, and he smacks his thumb with the hammer, and he goes, ah, Jesus. Now, that's, that's not what Thomas was saying. God is Messiah. In Isaiah 9, and verse six, chapter 9, and verse 6, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Now, obviously, Jesus is not God the Father, but, all right, so God's the Messiah. In John chapter, now I'm paraphrasing some of this because I got to keep my videos under an hour. Um. Matter of fact, Minds.com and BitChute.com, I'm on both of those. Uh, I forget. I don't think I could load anything more than 15 minutes on those. So I kind of abandoned those channels. But uh, Brighteon is, uh, they've said that they're going to stop people from loading uh, extra long videos. So I'm going to try to start keeping my videos under an hour. All right, so God is Messiah, as in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And then in John chapter 4, and verse 25 and 26, the woman at the well. I hope you know what I'm talking about here. The Samaritan woman at the well. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Christ is just the Greek rendering of the word Messiah. When he is come... He will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. God is everlasting. In Psalms 93, verses 1 and 2, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, 
Thou art from everlasting. Jesus is everlasting. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, remember when the uh, wise men went to King Herod and asked where Christ would be born? Well, this is where they got, this is where they found out. Uh, well, Herod called the scribes. I don't think the wise men uh, who went to Herod told them that. No, I, it was the, uh, Herod asked the, um, the scribes, where would Christ be born? And we read in Micah 5, 2, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Only God is glorified. In Isaiah 42, verse 8, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. In Hebrews 1, and verse 8, we read, But unto the Son he, God, saith, Thy throne, O God, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. In John 5, 23, All men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. In John 17, verse 5, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I have, which I had with thee before the world was. Now, in the previous study, in part A, we learned that Jesus was God manifested in flesh, in the body. And it's true. Jesus is not God the Father. And Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, uh, when Jesus prayed to the Father, what most people don't understand is that Jesus in his flesh human body is giving us an example. But yes, he was fully human and he was God. He was both. So let's take a look at a couple things. Well, let's, let's keep going here. God is I am. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, you know, God tells Moses to go to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh. And Moses says, well, when they ask me your name, what am I going to tell them? Because Egypt had a boatload of gods. They had Ra, Horus, uh, set. Uh, they had all kinds of different gods. Matter of fact, the I did a playlist, but the uh, the plagues of Egypt was a challenge to the gods of Egypt. You know, uh, I think Ra was the uh, sun god. And remember there was darkness in Egypt? Yeah. God was challenging the gods of Egypt. I mean, that's what it was. You know, the uh, the the plague of the frogs and uh, coming out of the river and the, the flies. Uh, matter of fact, Beelzebub, memory serves me correctly, that means Lord of the Flies. But in Exodus 3.14, you know, when uh, Moses asked God, well, what, what am I going to tell him your name is? I mean, let's face it. If you're a Satanist praying to Satan, uh, you're a member of the Church of Satan, I mean, you know, you're obviously not praying to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Obviously. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. In John 8, verse, chapter 8, verse 58, 
I think every Christian should read the eighth chapter of John. Uh, that puts a nail in the coffin of Christian so-called Zionism. There's no such thing as Christian Zionism. You're either a Zionist or you're a Christian. There is no Christian Zionist. You might be a church-going Zionist, a 501c3 church-going Zionist, but there's no such thing as a Christian Zionist. Read John chapter 8, especially verse 44, and then find out who Jesus was talking to, and then you will might learn something. Jesus, so God is I am, and Jesus is I am. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. In Psalms 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, who healeth all thy diseases. Now, I'm skipping around a little bit. In Matthew 8, 16, Jesus healed all that were sick. God is the judge of the whole world. In Psalms 94, verses 1 and 2, O Lord God, to whom vengeance, vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, shew, show thyself, lift up, lift up thyself, Thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. And in Genesis 18.25, Abraham speaks, speaking to God. Now, uh, he makes, he's going to Sodom, you know, and Abraham's concerned about Lot. You know, and he's getting ready to destroy Sodom with fire and brimstone. And Abraham says the following, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the answer is, of course. You know, and Abraham says, You know, well, would you destroy the city for 50 righteous people? How about 40? How about 30? How about 20? How about 10? And then Abraham decided not to put his, push his luck, so to speak, I guess you could say, you know. Well, guess what? There wasn't ten righteous. And when the uh, Sodomites and the Satanists and the evil people in California drive out all the righteous Christians, the true people, out of places like San Francisco or San Francisco, uh, look out. When there's not ten righteous people in San Francisco, Fag sicko, look out. Jesus is the judge of the whole earth. John 5, 22. The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, you know, people, that's the thing. Either Jesus is telling the truth or he's a liar. Personally, I think he's telling the truth. God has life in himself, John 5, 26. The Father hath life in himself. Jesus has life in himself, John 1, 4. So hath God given to the Son to have life in himself, and Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. God raises the dead, 5, 21. The Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them. Jesus raises the dead, John 5, 21. The Son quickeneth whom he will. Now, what does quickeneth mean? Well, it means anything alive is quick. Even a snail or a turtle is quick compared to something that's dead. Okay? And just remember, 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, 
received up into glory. Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, Jesus, uh, Christ Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Remember when uh, in the, uh, the Last Supper, he took a towel and wrapped it around his waist and he washed the feet of the disciples, the dirty, smelly feet of the disciples and took upon him the form of a servant and was made and was made in the likeness of men Jesus wasn't his body was made okay and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross John 1 John 5:7 for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Acts 20, verse 28, paraphrasing, Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. 1 John three sixteen, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he, who, he, who, God, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Acts 7, 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Wow. In Colossians 2 and verse 9, you know, a lot of this stuff from Paul, it just puts a nail in the coffin for all this stuff, you know. That's why these people hate Paul, because Paul raises Jesus up, and the modern Bible versions push Jesus down and make him a man, but then they elevate man. They, they, they elevate man to godhood, but they'll, you know, it's funny. They'll, they'll deny that God could become a man, but they'll, a lot of people believe that man could become God. Colossians 2.9 for in Jesus dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All right. Uh, in John 10, 33, the Jews answered Jesus saying, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The Jews answered Jesus saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. All right. Uh, in Luke chapter 22. Uh, let's go to verse 36. Luke 22, 36. Then said he, uh, Jesus, then said he unto them, but now... He that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. Then said they, Lord, behold, there here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, 
Jesus prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Okay, Jesus in his humanity is praying because he knows what's coming. Verse 43, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples. He found them sleeping for sorrow. All right, in the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he, Jesus, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show himself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he, Jesus, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. See, You know, there, there you go. Jesus, in his humanity, prayed to the Father. Now, let's take a look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. Now what was the promise of the Father? Uh, remember when they were gathered together in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit came upon them? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Listen carefully. They asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Okay. Uh, Israel was taken into the Assyrian and the Babylonian captivities. But yet they were promised that when the Messiah would come, he would, they would be restored. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? I mean, let's face it. What's New Jerusalem in Revelation 21 and 22? Verse 7, here's the answer. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. All right, go to uh, Mark chapter 13. Mark 13 is uh, a parallel uh, account of Matthew 24. 
Oh, uh, let's see. Math, Mark 13 and verse 30, talking about what the end times are going to be. Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day, what day? The second coming. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. So when you get somebody who says, oh, I know when Jesus is coming back. He's coming back on Friday the 13th on January or February 31st in um, 20, 2020 or whatever, you know. You know they're a false prophet. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Only God the Father knows the day that Christ, he's going to send his Son to go get his bride, the church, Israel. Only God the Father knows that. So obviously, God the Son is not God the Father. All right, let's go uh, verse 33. Take ye heed and watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest, suddenly, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Now, uh, God the Son is subject to the Father. And let's take a look in John 14, 26. We're going to look at the Comforter. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you, from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. All right, let's take a look real quick at Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. See, this is the only true communism that probably ever existed in the uh, world. I mean, people were selling their possessions, giving it to the apostles, and the apostles were distributing it to other people as needed. You know? Boy, uh, you won't see that ever happening at TBN or the 700 Prophets of Baal Club or Billy Graham's uh, ministry, whatever. So they sold something and they kept part of the money back. You know, they're... Basically, you sold something for 100 bucks, but you say, I'm going to keep $20, and I'm going to tell them I sold it for 80 and I'm going to give them the $80. Verse 3, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Did you know that he lied to the Holy Ghost? And people will tell you that the Holy Ghost is just uh, not really an entity. But how do you lie to, you know, can you lie to water? 
Can you lie to air? Can you lie to electricity? No. You have to lie to a, a basically an entity, a being of some sort. Right? But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? I mean, he was well within his rights to keep part of the land price to himself. He could have said, oh yeah, I sold it for 100, but I'm going to keep 20 and here's 80. He could have done that. No problem. It was his. God gave him the gift of the land, right? But he lied to the Holy Ghost. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So he lied to the Holy Ghost, and he says, But you lied not unto men, but unto God. So obviously, the Holy Ghost is also God. You know, uh, in part one, part A that we did, the previous study, we learned that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And man was made in God's image. So, yeah, here you go. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. How can you grieve water or electricity or air? You can't. You, have, you can only grieve an entity of some sort. Here's something wonderful. Luke 11, 13. Um, it says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children... How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Oh, yeah. Now, here's something interesting. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. And the four beasts each uh, had each of them six wings about them, wings. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, H-O-L-Y. They said that three times. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Why are they saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty? Holy, God the Father. Holy, God the Son. Holy, God the Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Ghost. Holy, holy, holy. They're not just repeating themselves. I mean, think about us. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. What's an infirmary? Have you ever heard of an infirmary? Infirmary? Mary, infirmary? I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. It, it's... Uh, it's when I was in the army, we had one. It was like a clinic. It means uh, like a sickness. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not that we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. The Spirit makes intercession for us. The Spirit has to be some kind of a being, an entity, because it makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Think about that. Romans chapter 8, 16. The Spirit also, uh, I'm sorry, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And then you can read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, you know, the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit gives gifts. You know, think about that. 2 Peter 1.21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Jude one twenty. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost. Romans 8.15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Here we go. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, that thou, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Boy, that would be, uh, that would be a shock, huh? And when she saw and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Yeah, what kind of greeting is that, you know? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No, no. And bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Wow. In Luke 12, 12, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour that uh, hour, what ye ought to say. First Corinthians six nineteen. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That word nations is the same word that's translated as Gentiles. Uh, it's the same word as Gentiles. Sometimes the King James translators use Gentiles. Other times they said nations. Same word, just translated two different ways. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What did the living creatures say? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Oh, yeah. There you go. In Acts 13, verse 4, So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is telling them where to go. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed into Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Check this out. Acts 13, 2. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost said. Now, how can a, 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 a Holy Ghost has to be an entity or some type of a, a being? Because the Holy Ghost said. 
Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Remember when Jesus was being baptized in the river in Luke 3 and verse 22. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, Jesus, right? The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 3. And I think we're going to close this out pretty right now. Um, Jesus is called the disciples, and he's doing miracles. Okay. Uh, verse 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. Uh, Beelzebub is the Lord of the flies, if memory serves me correctly. It's kind of a name for Satan. And they said, he hath Beelzebub. Now they're speaking about Jesus. They're saying he's doing the, the stuff by the power of the devil. He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he, Jesus, and he called unto them and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. You know, there's a lot of Jews to this day that teach that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of the devil. That's why you witness to him and you witness to him and you witness to him. They can't hear it because they've committed the unpardonable sin. And they're in danger of the internal damnation. They never have forgiveness. Those that teach that, that Jesus performed his miracles by the power of the devil never have forgiveness according to Christ in verse 29 here. Now, blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. All right, so we learned that God the Son is not God the Father who is not the Holy Ghost. I hope you learned something from this lesson. And uh, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, his precious name. Amen.